Hi, welcome back uh, to part two of my video diary of my journey um, with WGU, uh, with my Bachelor's of Science Information Technology degree. So today's uh, video is simply just going to be about the enrollment process and the different steps I went to to get to this point that I'm at right now, which is a day away from starting uh, the course proper, which is August the 1st, 2020. We're looking forward to it. So uh, the journey starts uh, about six weeks ago um, after talking to colleagues and friends and searching the internet and watching YouTube videos and basically researching. Um, I've decided on WGU as the, the, the college that or university I'd like to attend. Um, I called the number uh, from the website. It was an 800 number. Uh, I spoke to an enrollment uh, counsellor. Uh, they were very helpful. Um, they took all my information and uh, basically Walk, walk through the steps with me. Uh, the application fee is normally $65. Um, they waived that for me. I don't know if that was a special or, or what, why, but that was good. So I saved myself a little bit of money there. Uh, during the enrollment process on the phone, they basically get you to log in, you put in your personal information, stuff like that. Uh, they then um, ask you to provide transcripts. Uh, so that can be of your previous schooling or of any certifications, technical certifications you might have. So I don't have any uh, previous American transcript for education, but I, so that didn't uh, apply to me. But from what I understand, if you've been to school elsewhere, you can definitely transfer in and, and pr make a pretty good dent on your uh, on your program by you know why why we do stuff basically. So and they're pretty good like that from what I hear. Uh, for me though, the technical certs I have um, several uh, from Microsoft. I have an MCSA and I have an MCSE. Uh, and then from CompTIA, I have a Network Plus and a Security Plus. Now, there are other organizations you can provide them with other transcripts from other uh, companies, Cisco and places like that, but I don't have those. So anyway, um, I followed the instructions that they sent about how to gather the transcript information, and then I supplied it. Uh, the next thing I had to do was wait like three or four days, and then eventually I got an email back. I guess a team reviewed the transcripts and then decided what I could transfer into the program. Uh, Interestingly enough, um, they didn't take the MCC or the MCSA into account at all. I guess maybe they don't have a partnership with Microsoft, but I was kind of disappointed. Basically, nothing from those. Uh, but the good news is uh, CompTIA, uh, Security Plus, Network Plus, uh, they did take and they enabled me to basically pass free classes immediately. Uh, they were basically network and security classes. That's a, a, I think it's 11 credit hours total for the free, which is, you know, that's, that's pretty good. Free classes down. Uh, so that's, that's good. Um, better than the kick in the nuts, I guess. But like I said, I'm a bit disappointed about Microsoft because, uh, the MCC, for example, um, server infrastructure, I think they passed five different exams to get to that point. So I thought that was harder. I thought that'd be worth more, but I guess not. However, they reminded me that this is competency-based uh, education. So if there's information that you'd learn in your MCSE, then obviously those classes, you should be able to skip through them or get through them pretty easily. So that was their argument for that. So, okay. Anyway, uh, so after you provide your transcripts, uh, you then uh, find out whether you're accepted or not. Uh, I think that took two or three more days after that. So yeah, it took a little bit of time, but not long. Uh, you get an email saying, congratulations, you're in or... I guess, out. <laughs> uh, you then do an intake interview, which is again, another meeting with your uh, enrollment counselor. She basically just calls you, you set up a meeting, she calls you and you just talk about the courses that you're gonna do, basically agree on the um, the diploma for sure, that which one you're gonna do. So obviously for me, the information technology degree. Uh, once that's done, they open up the uh, financial requirements section of your enrollment process. So you just log into that and you, basically choose how you're going to pay. They just want to make sure you, you're you know, comfortable with that. Uh, so my classes, uh, the for my term as, as it stands right now, is about $3,500 a term, which is a six month term. Um, you can make monthly payments. You can pay it all up front if you want to, or you can, uh, there's a different um, scholarships and things you can apply for. Uh, certain companies as well, they will give discount if you work for like companies within their network, things like that, you'll get a discount. So the company that I work for right now is a partner. I got 5% discount on the overall price. Yeah, it's better than nothing. But anyway, so yeah, you set up payments, whatever, make sure you fulfill that part of it. That can take a, 
couple of days, depending on whether you're applying for scholarships. After that, uh, you don't do anything until the 15th of the month. So I had quite a break. So we're talking mid-June, did most of this stuff in the first week. And then I sat tight. I sat tight for like a two or three weeks, which to me was really frustrating because orientation doesn't open to the 15th for some reason, which I think is stupid, but it is what it is. So I would have happily taken orientation immediately, started on July 1, and then I could have basically not lost a month because I've not really done a great deal this last month. I could have got quite a bit done. But that's not how it works. So I was kind of frustrated. Um, so anyway, 15th rolled around. I was chomping at the bit. I got straight in there. I did the orientation program. It took about three hours. A whole bunch of different questions, videos, things like that. It was very simple, just simple rules and regulations, what they expect uh, from you uh, with the with the, with the uh, college and then time management, things like that. Uh, there's um, a test for your PC. They want to make sure the laptop or whatever you're using is compatible with their software. Very straightforward. You just follow the instructions, things like that. They download the O365 uh, software, which they give you for free, which basically Excel, Word, uh, your email, client, things like that. There's a PowerPoint, a whole bunch of stuff, which I thought was great that they give you that for nothing because if you're an active member, you get it for free. So that's worth quite a lot of money for having that software. So you download it, get it ready. Um, there's a, there is a small test, very simple common sense questions. And then there's also a paper that you have to submit. So you download the template, uh, you fill in the questions. It's all self analysis type stuff. You're like, you know, asking questions about why you're doing this, your goals, your ambitions. It's, you know, like I said, it's all touchy feely kind of stuff. The part, last part of the paper is a, uh, uh, like a calendar. I think it's a week. And what they want you to do is they want you to break down like a standard one week that for you, like, you know, how, what, what parts of the day you're going to sleep, when you're going to eat, when you're going to work, when you're going to spend time with your family. And most importantly is when you're going to study uh, with WGU. And um, that's what they're looking for. They want to make sure you understand that this is a, a serious commitment. Um, they say during the orientation, it's pretty clear, it's 15 to 20 hours a week that they ex kind of expect you to do if you're going to be successful. Now, my understanding is people do a lot more than that and a lot less, but that's kind of what they're looking for. Anyway, um, so you submit that. I submitted that night. Uh, next morning, I got a text message and I signed up for text message alerts uh, and then an email as well, just saying, yep, it was good. Give me a little green circle on my, um, on my enrollment page. So that was fine. And then nothing for a few days. And then I got an email uh, asking me to set up a meeting with my mentor. Uh, so basically you go into, follow the link in the email. Uh, you uh, can look on the, your mentor's um, calendar, pick a time, phone number. And what they do is they basically call you at that allotted time. So my mentor meeting was about 30 minutes long. It was really nice. We talked about my background and what I'm looking to do. And she was very, very nice, very educated, understands the program, obviously uh, no issues there. I think we're going to get on great. Uh, you, at that point as well, you can choose which classes you want to do first. Uh, I think you can do anything in the catalog, basically, whatever you want to do. But for me, I just went with the initial four default uh, uh, programs. So that's Comp 1, Introduction to IT, Introduction to Communication, and then Critical Thinking and Logic. I think that's what it's called. Yeah, so they're the four classes that I'm doing. Uh, during that meeting, my mentor said that they're available for me anytime. I can text her, email, call her. Uh, basically, they're there to support you for as much as you need. Uh, some people I think are more independent than others, but they're there to help you, all sorts of different things. Um, yeah, so that was it really. And then um, she, uh, she she just uh, asked to set up a, a reoccurring meeting with me, which I thought was fine. So we're going to meet once a week, once I start uh, on a Monday, uh, Monday morning, and we'll just do a little catch up meeting. I can't imagine it'll take more than 10 minutes. And I think from what I understand is once you've had, you know, shown to them that you're understand the process and can work independently i think you can extend that out so once a month once or two weeks i don't know but initially it starts once a week and that's what i'm doing um yeah so that's really basically it uh, and then now i'm just sitting tight so it's you can't do anything at that point until the first of the month uh the only thing you can do and this is a little tip for you is you can log in and you can see your entire course you can't see the actual learning material until the first but you can do the pre-assessments so those classes that have pre-assessment tests you can take them and you can take them cold and uh, they just give you an idea where you are they're actually pretty good so i've done two so far on two of the first four subjects i'm doing 
and you just take them and what they do is once you've completed them they tell you if you passed or failed it also tells you your strengths you know gives you a kind of score and um, kind of gives you an idea whether you're ready to move on to the final and then the areas that you might need some work it actually breaks it down and said hey look you need a little bit of work on this and it kind of points you in that direction so i thought they were really useful and my mentor said to me it doesn't hurt you at all you can take these things as many times as you like it's it's pre-assessment so go ahead and do that if you're in the same position as me because at least it gives you an idea so what i did was in preparation for the pre-assessment i couldn't see the course material but i went out to quizlet and there's a whole bunch of stuff out there people with like um, learning material study material so i just searched for the name of the course and i found some uh, like uh, slides of people that had done these classes before so i just reviewed them just took a quick look i picked one one was a deck of about 100 uh, like questions and kind of key uh, topics, subjects, uh, keywords, that kind of stuff. Um, I did that for uh, both um, uh, logic, uh, sorry, uh, critical thinking and um, introduction to IT. So I went and took the pre-assessments, like I said, passed both. One I got an exemplary and one I got, um, what do they call it? Sorry about this, competent. So, and according to the report, competent means that you're ready to move on to the final. And exemplary obviously means you're really ready. So, uh, from what I take from that, then is my first uh, days coming up, uh, August the 1st. So, really, I feel like if that first weekend I'm going to just review the material super quick, maybe redo the uh, pre assessment just once more just to be safe. And then I'm basically going to try and knock out the final. So, fingers crossed, maybe I knock out two of my classes in the first weekend. Wouldn't that be? amazing but and then i'll focus on the other two but uh, so if you have time i would definitely do that because why not get off to a good start if you can that's that's what i thought anyway so that's it from me i know this one's a longer uh video than i originally said i was going to do in my intro i'm going to try and keep them much shorter in the future but there was quite a lot of information there so hopefully it was helpful um yeah so look out for video number three which i believe i'm going to do uh for you shortly and that's going to be basically around um the student success kit that they send you in the mail anyway uh take care i hope to uh speak to you soon